Today we're talking about pearly white, code SW7009. The SW in that code stands for Sherwin-Williams, which is the company that made this color. What I'm gonna do is talk about this color in great detail because a lot of you seem to like it and use it. It's been featured in several color collections like the Finest Whites collection. It's even been in their top 50 colors collection, so you know it's gotta be good. Stay tuned for the second half of this video because I'm going to be giving you some color pairing options. That way you can use other paint colors in conjunction with it to create an awesome color palette. Free color advice from me. And all I ask is a press of that like button. That's it. I wanna start with the company's description of pearly white on their website. A gray undertone adds a cool gentleness to this bright, white, elegant on its own, or a lovely way to help darker hues stand out. But what does that all mean? Let's start from the top. I don't normally like to describe colors as having a gray undertone because that doesn't really tell us a ton. I will agree that there does feel to be some gray added into this color, technically, to both darken it and also give it that semi-warm grayed out feeling to it. I guess, but that still wouldn't be its undertone, technically. I also agree there is perhaps a cool gentleness to the color, meaning it's soft, and I wouldn't call it obviously warm either, so I'll give them that. I also don't know if I would call it a cold color, on the other hand, because it does seem to straddle this line between both color temperatures. It's kind of lukewarm, I guess you could say. <laughs> Which I suppose is what any good neutral color is supposed to do. We'll get to the undertones in just a second, but continuing on, we have to address the fact that the company Sherwin-Williams is calling this a bright white. It simply isn't. At best, it's an off-white. And we know this because of its light reflectance value, or its LRV. And this is a number you can find on the website right near its name. And when we go there, we can see that pearly white scores a 77 out of 100. That means it's pretty light, but I wouldn't call it a bright white in anybody's books. You can check my books, you're not gonna see it in there. I hope I'm not sounding like I'm being overly hard on pearly white. It's not the color's fault that the description is just a little misleading. One thing that I will concede is this is a color that you can use in place of a lot of other white or off-white paint colors because it is pretty light overall and soft and passive. One of your classic neutral canvas colors in my mind, although it's perhaps easier to work with when you have it next to darker colors for the most part. I say that because it's an off-white that has quite a bit of nuance in its color category. That cool aspect I referenced earlier can give it a very subtle green undertone, which can show up in certain situations. You'll just have to test the color out to find out if your space will do that. Not really gonna be a problem when you're introducing deeper colors around it. Spoiler alert, that's exactly what I did with my color pairings coming up. Stay tuned. <laughs> These aren't guns, they're funny fingers. So, now he's unarmed. But when you have it next to another off-white with a very similar light reflectance value or lightness level, that's where you might run into some problems where maybe you have pearly white's very soft green touch, sort of butting heads against Tuke White's slightly cool purple touch, for example. Funnily enough, that's another color branded as a bright white that's even darker than pearly white. What do you do in Sherwin-Williams? Stop confusing my people, my paint people. Not to say those two colors can't coexist, but you just have to be that much more diligent with your testing before painting with them. As a whole though, pearly white is one of those colors that are popular for a good reason. Not necessarily the most exciting color swatch I've ever looked at, but there's something oddly satisfying about a nice boring color like this. It's a color that you can just leave alone. You don't have to pay too much attention to it. It's just gonna hang out in the background and just chill, let you do your thing. And I think that should be commended. Overall, I would say it's an excellent choice for a light color to go throughout your entire home or just the main areas of your home if you wanted to switch things up a little bit. But now for the color pairings. I'm definitely leaning into darker colors to help contrast the lightness in pearly white. One, because I just feel like a bit of depth would be nice here. And two, I wanted these colors to be very apparent rather than working with a bunch of vague neutrals that all seem to do something similar wasn't into that. Let's start with this one. This is a color that is on the slightly 
darker side of being a mid-tone, but its much more apparent green aspect is softened by a slightly cool slate gray. You could technically say it's a cooler green, but I would say it has enough of that natural warmth to it where it feels earthy, kind of like a rock covered in a very thin layer of moss, like paper thin. It sits within that nearly neutral area of colors that's right on the borderline of feeling like gray with a very strong undertone. Or you can think of it like a really pure color that's been softened or toned down. And because of that, I wouldn't even label this as an accent color because I would feel comfortable using it in different parts of the home on all the walls. Maybe not in every room or most of the rooms, but a couple. It feels a bit safe, even though it's pretty saturated. Next is Velvety Chestnut, which is a color that has a bit more depth to it, which means it's darker. Essentially, it's sort of a taupey red-based brown, although unlike a lot of the popular colors of 2023, instead of having a terracotta sandy coloration, this color almost feels smoky in comparison. It's just an interesting twist to brown that I really enjoy, and it's gonna complement the other colors we talked about already. This is another color that is pretty saturated, but I don't find it to be overly vibrant either because they're more so tones and shades rather than pure hues that are rich with saturation. The third color has a ton of saturation, mainly coming from how dark it is, but even this one has a slightly mysterious haziness to it that I really do enjoy. It's a very dark blue called Outer Space. And this is totally like a slate blue, not quite a charcoal blue to me because it's LRV is still over 10, which means it's really dark, but not quite off black territory, let's say. This would be the accent color to me that I would maybe reserve for a single room to really stand out in. It's the darkest of the bunch. It also has a third color being introduced in the form of blue. So not really a monochromatic palette we've put together so far. In fact, it's quite the opposite. But the good thing is they do all share that slightly dusty, toned down quality that will allow them to be implemented a bit easier in more designs. Trim color time. Extra white is my clean, light trim choice when you're painting your baseboards and doors and frames. Anything you wanna be white and clean, extra white is my choice. It's gonna reflect a lot of light, making it nice and vibrant, and is the default choice for all that woodwork in your home. This is my fun, dark trim color choice. I love this fairly dark, rich stone gray. Maybe a touch of a green undertone as well. It'll really pop against pearly white and will really suit the other colors in different ways, but all of which I enjoy. Definitely the bolder trim choice of the two, but why not, right? Here's the color palette all together. Tell me what you think. And here's another one for your enjoyment because I make a lot of these videos, six a week. So um, why not just keep watching? More colorful fun your way right over here.